Welcome. Now, in this module, we're going to take a look at case study for security hardening for a virtualization uh, mechanism, VMware, which is a very, very popular virtualization software. So this is the CIS benchmark case study for VMware ESXi 5.5. And this is a look at the top page for the CIS VMware ESXi 5.5 benchmark document from December 16, 2014. So this is also an old document with 132 pages of PDF. Now, uh, control 5.1 says disable DCUI to prevent local administrative control, and this is scored, and it's a level two, so it's a serious uh, control here, and the severity level is high. So let's take a look at what DCUI means. In description, it tells us the direct console user interface DCUI can be disabled to prevent any local administration from the host, which means from actually from, from, from the computer. Um, not from uh, the virtualized instance, but from the computer. Um, <clears throat> once the DCUI is disabled, any administration of the ESXi host will be done through vCenter. Um, and the rationale continues, the DCUI allows for low-level host configuration, such as configuring IP address, host name and root password, as well as diagnostic capabilities such as enabling ESXi shell viewing log files, restarting agents, and resetting configurations. Actions performed from the DCUI are not tracked by vCenter server. Even if lockdown mode is enabled, users who are members of the DCUI.access list can perform administrative tasks in the DCUI bypassing role-based access control or RBAC and auditing controls provided through vCenter. DCUI access can be disabled. Disabling, it prevents all local activity and thus forces actions to be performed in vCenter. So it's recommending that we should perform the actions in vCenter because they're audited and controlled uh, via uh, you know, access control. And if you go to DCUI on the host, then it bypasses vCenter altogether, uh, which is not good from a security perspective. So here are the audit steps performed the following. From the vSphere, uh, vSphere web client, select the host, select manage, settings, system, security profile, scroll down to services, click edit, select and select direct console UI. And then verify the startup policy is set, is set to start and stop manually in the audit. Um, it also gives us the uh, exact configuration. Additionally, the following power CLI command may be used as shown in blue here. For remediation, um, it asks us to, uh, it, it, you know, it actually guides us how to fix this. And these steps are shown here. Um, and we have eight steps. And finally, you click OK. And you change the startup policy start and stop manually. Okay. Now the impact. Disabling the DCUI can create a potential lockout. So this is a slight caveat. Although the, the rec control has been recommended, but now it's telling us, this particular STIG is telling us what could happen, what could go wrong. And uh, then in the end, um, as we'll see, it gives us an alternate mechanism as well. So it says under impact, disabling the DCUI can create a potential lockout situation should the host become isolated from vCenter server for some reason. Recovering from a lockout scenario requires reinstalling the ESXi altogether because we've blocked out the, the, you know, the configuration from the host, from DCUI, and we want to do it from ESXi, um, from, uh, from vSphere, so if, if those become separated for some reason, then you have a lockout situation. Consider leaving, so it's now it's telling us a recommendation, consider leaving DCUI enabled and instead enable lockdown mode and limit the users allowed to access the DCUI using DCUI access list. So it's telling us that what, what the other thing you can do to prevent vSphere from, from getting locked out um, is that you can apply access control on DCUI as well. And the default value, uh, the prescribed state is uh, not the default state as mentioned here. And we have some references as well, where it takes us to the VMware website. And that's all we have for this control. Thank you.